Good morning, <clears throat> and welcome to Mass Memorial CME Church Sunday School. Theme for the quarter, Justice, Law, and History. Unit 1, God Requires Justice. Today's lesson, Sunday, December 19, 2021. Justice and Righteousness Reign. Our scripture text, Isaiah 9, 2 through 7. Our key verse, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with the justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Isaiah 9, 7, King James Version. Aim for our lesson today is to analyze the importance of this prophecy for the people of God in Isaiah's time and now. Celebrate the justice, righteousness, and peace that Jesus brings to God's people. Share with others the hope of eternal peace and justice found in Jesus' reign. A lesson background, Isaiah 9, 2 through 7. Um, time and location. These writings, I believe, have taken place around 733 B.C. in Jerusalem. The latter scriptures take place around 30 A.D. This uh, 733 B.C. is approximately 700 years before the coming of Christ. The book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah deals with the rebellion and darkness of Israel and their failure to worship and be obedient to God. This book also deals with the failed leadership of King Ahaz, Uzziah, Jotham, Hezekiah, and Manasseh. The book of Isaiah brings to us a picture of hope, joy, and peace amid destruction. The book of Isaiah clearly predicts the coming of the Messiah. The prophet Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah is one of the best known and most influential prophets in the Old Testament. He is believed to have belonged to one of Judah's wealthy class and may have been related to the ruling family at the time. Isaiah is believed to have lived and prophesied in the southern kingdom for about 58 years. He spent much of his time appealing to the rich of the aristocracy, and he would appeal to them about the treatment of the poor and about uh, appeasing their enemies and also about being obedient to God. Prophecy. Isaiah's prophecy was, in spite of being in a place of chaos and turmoil, that God would make himself known through a new light which would appear as Jesus Christ. Isaiah constantly and repeatedly called on the nation to rely on God rather than the military or political policy. We know that this was one of the failures of the of the northern kingdom and both the southern kingdom. In our lesson, it talks about two kingdoms, the kingdom of Judah. Israel was split into two kingdoms, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom was eventually carried into captivity by the Assyrians. But before they were carried into captivity, King Ahaz tried to make uh, deals with the Assyrians possibly to keep them from being taken into captivity. But this did not work because it was not a part of God's plan. And so that left the southern kingdom, which left Isaiah and Hezekiah and Manasseh. And the southern, king actually, southern kingdom actually maintained their freedom a little bit longer because before they were taken into captivity, the people themselves decided that they would return to God. And we know that um, going back to the northern kingdom, Amos and Hosea had really preached to the, the ru ruling um, parties in the northern kingdom to repent and to not to rely on military strength for their victories. Because we know throughout the Old Testament, many of the greatest victories that the Israelites received was when God was with them or intervened in their battle. Uh, king Hezekiah <clears throat> was also a king in the southern kingdom. He 
did not want to listen to Isaiah either. But as we said previously, the people themselves decided that they were going to follow Christ, follow God at the time. So they were spared for a little, little bit longer. However, they were eventually taken into captivity by the Babylonians. Our lesson scripture, Isaiah 9, 2 through 7. Our first set of scriptures come from Isaiah 9, 2 through 5. The end of darkness. Um, the book of Isaiah, and along with Amos and Hosea, often um, presents a picture of doom and gloom. But the difference between the book of Isaiah is that there was a way out. He preached doom and gloom, but he also preached the coming of light into darkness. So <clears throat> starting with Isaiah 9 and 2, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them has the light shine. And basically, um, this verse indicates Israel's current affliction and their hope for the future. They, they were actually in spiritual darkness just because of the, their disobedience and failure to recognize God, who he was. And so, <clears throat> in Isaiah's prophecy, remember, the coming of the Messiah had not yet taken place, but Isaiah prophesied that if it had taken place. And one thing he emphasized is that the first people to receive the light, which is Christ, would be the children of Israel, would be Israel. And we know this because it says this light would come to a great nation and it would be um, the land of ne ne Nebulon and Naphtali, which was a part of the Galilee territory. And we know that this is the territory which Christ was born. So this first verse talks about um, their spiritual darkness, but also that there was hope for the future. Isaiah 9, 3. Thou hast multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. They joy before thee according to the joy in harvest. And as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. This uh, verse doesn't come across very clear, but it, once we get into the explanation of what it means, um, it talks about the people would receive joy as a result of God bringing them plentiful food and supplies. And one reason that they mentioned joy in the harvest because the harvest was everything to the children of Israel. They had three major festivals concerning the harvest and that was Passover, Pentecost, and Harvest of Tabernacles. And what they would do, they would celebrate what had grown if they had a plentiful harvest, they would celebrate even more. And the joy of the harvest, <clears throat> it said, as men rejoice when they divide the spoils. This has reference to war. And what this says is that um, soldiers who would go in and capture a nation would actually divide the items that they had plundered from that nation or had taken from their enemies. You know, when Jerusalem fell, they robbed the temple of gold, of, of anything of value. And that's what this means. They split this, uh, this uh, plundering among themselves. And it says that the joy before according to the joy in the harvest. And as men rejoice when they divide the spoils. So here Isaiah is saying that at some point in time, they will rejoice in the harvest and there will be no more need to divide the spoils because there will be no more war. And Israel will no longer be plundered by other nations. Isaiah 9 and 4, it says, For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. There is a lot in this, this short verse. Um, First of all, let's look at what Isaiah had reference to when talk about a yoke. A yoke was a wooden, believed to be a wooden uh, device that was put on oxen to kind of guide them and divide them. It was put on their backs. They would put on the back of work animals. 
and the rod was used to beat them into oppression, to beat them so that they would um, do what they were told. And Israel, Isaiah reminds Israel that you have suffered many beatings at the hands of your enemies. You suffered 400 years in Egypt and under slavery. And so he says, Christ, when Christ comes, the, the yoke will be broken and there will no longer be a need for this rod. And it says the rod of the oppressor as in the day of, of Midian. This has reference to the battle of, that happened um, that happened with Gideon and a small band of uh, soldiers that defeated a massive army. And that story is in the book of Judges, if you would like to have a reference to that. But he's saying that you no longer would be subjected to bondage. Now, here Isaiah is prophesizing in a time when they're just about to be taken into captivity. So we just, it's just you just can't imagine what these people must have thought. You know, here he is prophesizing that they will no longer be subjected to that, and they're getting ready to be taken into captivity by the Babylonians. But he's saying, in spite of that, there will be a new life, a new light into you as a nation. Isaiah 9, 5. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fearful fire. This is actually a future prediction that Isaiah is bringing to the people of Israel. He's saying that God will bring you victory in the future over your enemies and that with the coming of the Messiah there would be lasting peace and these items of blood stained clothes and, and battle garments will no longer be needed. Since Jesus Christ will deliver Israel at the close of the tribulation period and the battle of Armageddon. This basically has reference to the book of Revelation and the end of time. And it with Jesus' reign, there would be no more war. Um, we probably can't think of that and imagine that in our day, but that's a promise that God said would happen. That in the end, there would be war, no more war. There would be peace. There would be no more bloodshed. There would be no more burning of, of garments that have been bloodstained. So this is a future prediction. This doesn't have reference to even though he made it at this time, it has reference to the future. And for us, it also has reference to the future. It applies to us as well. Isaiah 9, 6. Very familiar verse. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be up on his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. This is a future prediction that's being made by Isaiah. That this Savior that's going to come, the light that this light that's going to appear in the world, will come as a gift. And when something is given, it's, it's not something that you buy, you pay for, it's given. And so I, Isaiah says that. Um, this gift will be given to Israel, but in the New Testament, it has reference to this gift being given to all mankind, all mankind, which is Christ. Um, when it talks about um, his name, um, this verse really deals with the humanity of Christ. And this also deals with the promise that God made to David that a deliverer will come through his lineage. And so, going back, the New Testament has reference to humanity, the, the whole race. But Isaiah not only says, this child will come, it will be given as a gift. But, there's going to be a sense of, he'll have a yoke up on his shoulders. And that will be the price of redeeming, or allowing man a way to come back to God. 
And when he talks about his name, basically has reference to some of the Messiah's characteristics. He will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and finally the Prince of Peace. And it says, the government will be upon his shoulder. That means that he will rule. There will be no more uh, kings. No, he will rule over all creation. Isaiah 9, 7. The increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. These are future predictions that Isaiah made. One thing about the book of Isaiah, it is probably the, the book that gives us the clearest prediction that the Messiah will come. Even though it, you find it also in some of the Old Testament, Older Testament scriptures, like the beginning of, in the books of law. But this is so very clear. Isaiah says there will be a savior, there will be a person to rule. And once his kingdom is established, he will judge, there will be justice for all mankind, and he will rule forever. And it says, of the increase of his government and peace, there should be no end. And this seems like it's something that's far away, but to have total peace, no more this government or that government or this king or that king or that president or this governor. Upon Christ's return, there will be no more um, kings or whatever. It says he will rule with justice and he will rule forever. When he said the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And so zeal has reference to the eagerness to act on behalf of the people and prove himself faithful to all the promise through Christ. And so it says he will do this and there will be he will, there will be an eagerness about his ability to perform this task. And we know the story in the New Testament. There were times he 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 um, that Christ did lament over what he had to do. But in the end, it wasn't about him. It was about what God wanted. It was about what his father wanted. But Isaiah is a book, like I said, that predicts, that has some horrible, horrible predictions. But it also has great, brings us great joy and peace in knowing that destruction and living in darkness is not forever. And I think that's what we need to realize today because if we look around today, we, are, we probably think we're in the worst of times. But there's also, we should also get joy as believers to know that it's not the end and it will, it will not last forever. We always talk about the light at the end of the tunnel. Once that light appears, darkness disappears. They can't occupy the same portal. So we still have something to look forward to, even though we see injustices, we see um, spiritual denial, we see many things going on in our own present time, and these same things went on in the time of Isaiah. So this book is not just written for the people of Israel, it's written for us today. This lesson has some practical application. As I said, it's not just written for it's not just written for the Israelites, it's also written for us. And as we go through the next few weeks of 2021 and the upcoming year 2022, we should start to show an attitude of joy and thanksgiving so others may see Jesus in us. According to Isaiah 9, 3, it is the presence of God in our lives that brings true joy and also true peace because with Without him, there's anger, there's self-destruction, there's just eagerness to do 
things that are not right. So over the last year, we can relate to many instances um, that Israel faced in its days of darkness. But Isaiah's message gives us a reason to look forward to what Christ brings us, life and eternal life. So we, we have to know that there's something more, something better. You get up every morning, you should be thankful that you see the light of day, which represents God is present. He's present every day. And so, um, according to um, the book of Isaiah, he dealt with the leadership. And so we need to pray for our leaders that they will be able to do what is in the best interest of the people. We know that in the Old Testament, many of the nations suffered because of what the kings did and the, the decision of the king. If the king said, let's worship these idol gods, that's what the people had to do. So oftentimes, that burden of, of destruction and disobedience came through the king. But under the new dispensation, we don't, it, it's going to be each individual and God. So we need to pray for our leadership that they will do things in the best interest of the people. Um, as, as I said, we compare, if we compare our leaders to the rules of Isaiah's time, Human leaders can fail us, but Christ's rule is perfect. And we need to be mindful that anyone can fall into darkness or desperation, but no one needs to remain there forever. For it's beyond, some things are far beyond our control, but through the promises of God, we can keep ourselves afloat. And believers should have more hope than anybody else because they know what Christ has to, has to offer. Um, as we look at the failure of some of our leaders, you have to wonder, is it because they don't know God, they don't know Christ, and they are relying totally upon themselves? As far as they're concerned, when it, it's over, it's over. There's no future for them. But for believers, there is a future. There's hope and there's a future. So as we look back on this lesson in the book of Isaiah and compare what went on in Isaiah's time and what's going on in our times, they, it all comes together. There's nothing new under the sun. So what happened in Isaiah's time is also happening now. So as we start the year 2022, we need to have a greater commitment for Christ so that we can have more light, peace, and joy in our lives. And on that note, we're going to end our lesson, and we want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and celebrate the birth of Christ, because this is why we celebrate this time of the year. And we hope that you will join us for the balance of our lesson for this year and start off with us in 2022 for our virtual Sunday School lessons. Thank you.